elision. This is more important, but this is the leaving out of a sound. And, you know, these two terms are strange. We've had terms for them for hundreds of years, really. Special words for it happening in language, you know, because elision means omission, that's all. But we keep a special word for it for uh, applied to language. Shows how conscious people have been of the fact that things do get omitted in the course of a piece of speech. In the same way with assimilation, we've had that term around for a long while uh, because people have been very uh, clear uh, that it was a linguistic phenomenon. But anyway, uh, I think this should cause you little trouble. And if you turn up the top of the next page, the other the first page, you'll see I give examples like breaststroke, first stop, mask ball, next time. I left the T out at the end of next t uh, of the first word, the word next in next time. I just had the K and the S. That was quite enough to be saying for another T. Uh, if you try and put the, all those consonants in and say next time, you will slow yourself down unbearably and you'll sound very artificial. Nobody speaking normally in natural conversation says next time. Uh, of course, the, the, the sin here is the one of releasing a final T. I hope you know it's a rule of English allophone. that if a, a word, a first word, ends in uh, a plosive consonant, but uh, curtains on, and the next word begins with a consonant, not with a vowel, then you don't release that plosive consonant normally, really. You, you do half of that plosive and go on to start the next one. You don't quite complete it. So it's an unreleased, or not fully released, consonant. Anyway, uh, I think you're not going to have much trouble with those, as long as you don't overdo trying to be clear and, and let yourself do the natural thing that native speakers do. They, they naturally simplify it by using the last sound in, in an expression like masked ball. Can I say masked, masked ball? I think it sounds ridiculous if I really try and say every time. Masked ball, masked ball. Even leave the K out if you have a masked ball. I didn't say the K that last time. Didn't sound awful to me. In the context, it'll be quite understandable. And I've given some examples there. A very common uh, further assimilation that we make, you don't have to make, but we do quite often. In other words, we do, instead of saying a good deal, we often say a good deal, a good deal better. Uh, <laughs> instead of take care, we, we, we sometimes say take care. Instead of prime minister, we say prime minister, prime minister. Um, prime being a word for keeping to somebody else's business, uh, interfere. Um, Yes, sometimes people write letters to the newspaper objecting to the fact that uh, television and radio newsreaders have said prime minister instead of prime minister. Stupid thing to do because they say it all the time. It's just that uh, what one does find is that retired uh, uh, clergymen and retired army officers have nothing better to do but sit and, and, and watch television because they're on their pensions and, and there's nothing occupying their minds, so they, they'd rather start fussing over the way people speak in, in, in the television news uh, and then waste editor's time in newspapers. But unfortunately, it, when it gets around to the silly season, this time of year, you know, you heard the silly season in our newspapers, at this time of year, newspapers print anything, however silly, because they want, they want to fill up the space. There's no, there's no news, nothing much happening this time of year normally. The parliament has gone down. Uh, everybody's on their holidays, only a few wars here and there, and they won't fill up these middle pages, <laughs> the correspondence columns, so they'll, they'll print some silly letter about somebody who suddenly noticed something that, that he should have known long ago if he'd had any degree of education in linguistics, but of course you can't expect that of army officers, can you? So there you are. Uh, other examples, extra tension, so extra attention, uh, and so on. And, oh, now, Getting on to the same thing as I was saying about assimilati assimilation. Right, it's true that, um, that uh, these ongoing uh, reductions I've just mentioned, you, you have to make them when they're heavy groups of consonants, like S, K, T, and then, an, then, a, then another consonant. Uh, you have to make them there. Ordinarily, you don't have to uh, make any reductions. It's only these heavy groupings that are rather unusual, if you like. Uh, and you have to do it if the word has actually changed its form, if it's internal to a word and we're no longer up against the matter of words coming together in the stream of speech, but ca coming to a form that you'll find in the dictionary if the dictionary is up to date. And dictionaries very, very often aren't up to date. You, I think you could rely on, on Professor Wells' dictionary very happily and the advanced English dictionary and the long uh, uh, dictionary of English, but 
Dictionary is meant for the native English speaker. Uh, be very careful to, uh, that you don't uh, take too much notice of them because they usually represent the English of 50 or 100 years ago, if that. Uh, so uh, even Daniel Jones' dictionary, I'm afraid, is not free from much criticism in that respect. Uh, I, I was shocked years ago when I saw what he'd got for the word actually, for instance. Well, actually, that word's been pronounced three syllables for a very long time. But you could look at the Daniel Jones' dictionary and imagine that it's intended to be pronounced actually. Actually. And you will actually hear people say it that way one time in 10,000. <laughs> Elderly people who are speaking very slowly. Uh, so there you are. No, it's actually, generally, usually. These are all three syllables, even two. In fact, usually, usually is usually, usually two syllables. Uh, it depends. And uh, temporarily has gone, got shortened in the last 30 years. Um, there are still one or two clever people around in the BBC who can actually manage to say temporarily. <laughs> but when they do, I can almost see the smile of satisfaction. They say, we have got all the syllables out. <laughs> but they're the only ones doing it. They, I, I know one or two pride themselves on doing it. Very, very nice people, but they're misguided, really, because the rest of us have stopped making any difference between that temporarily and temporarily. Uh, or, if they don't, they take another easy way out and do it the American way. Quite a lot of British people do what the Americans do. They make it easy by having a, a stronger stress a bit later. And Americans say temporarily, temporarily. So, okay, do it that way if you like. It doesn't matter. Right. Uh, middle paragraph then. Examples like uh, uh, postman, windmill, grandfather. Don't. See? doesn't matter whether you put the T in or not, but if you do put the T or the D or whatever in, don't release it, for heaven's sake. Because if you release it, if you say postman, I said the T there, but you can hardly hear it. But if I say postman, 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 no, it sounds as much like posterman as postman, right? In the same way, windmill sounds like windermill, or halfway to it anyway. And grandfather sounds like, if you say the D, sounds like, as much like grandfather as grandfather. So don't release that consonant. Keep it a minimum length. And uh, remember that in the last set of words there, words like calm, calm, blagger, cupboard, <laughs> soften, Christmas, they've lost the, the, some of their consonants forever. I mean, I hope nobody said, well, I did hear once, once in my life I heard somebody put the T in Christmas. I was absolutely shocked, you know. Uh, you can, we put it back in too often, so you never know what's going to happen. Uh, 70 years ago, the word often was very rarely pronounced often. Now, you'll often hear it pronounced often, and not so often pronounced often. So, there you are. Uh, so, you, the thing is, of course, check with the dictionary about things like that. Cupboard, I'm sure you knew, blackguard, probably you didn't know. Anyway, as it's not a very useful word, you can forget it again, but there it is. It, that kind of thing does happen. And finally, on the matter of uh, elision, i give you the, the most important tip, I think, really. Uh, you have to be particularly careful with a pair of consonants that are really double consonants that we treat as one, behave as one largely. They are a more of a problem. And these are the two Africas, ch and j. Right? And now I give an example of what people will hear, what it will suggest to people if you misuse them in expression like, instead of saying village church, because we don't say which church, we say which church. We say the ch twice. We don't elide or, or shorten the first one. So if you say, if you want to say village church, but you don't say the j at the end properly, then you say village church, whatever that means. How are you villi a church? I don't know. I've never heard the verb to villi before. And this looks like a past tense, the village church, right? Or H.G. Wells. Uh, well, obviously you know who that is. The famous writer H. G. Well, you have to say the ch properly. H. G. Wells and watch chain. Well, I don't wear a chain. I, I wear a wristwatch. But no, if you talk about a watch chain, but leave the ch out in the first word, then you've got a watch chain, which sounds like some to totally different thing. So be careful of those. But there are certain. Now this is the good news again. There are certain nice little uh, devices we have for making life easy for us. And that is in plurals of words with th. We don't, we don't say five sixths. You know, I, I've been in, in. I've heard lessons being given where teachers are carefully drilling their pupils in in a school abroad in saying things that nobody ever attempts to to say, like five sixths, eleven elevenths, and so on. <laughs> These things just don't. 
don't come out that way. We, now, the strategies we use are a little bit complicated sometimes, so perhaps you could leave yourself trying to say them but not worry too much. But what you can recognize, for instance, is, and this is one of the most commonly heard mispronunciations of an English word I ever come across, and that is the word month. People can usually say it fine. Certain people, as good as you are, because I have no trouble about saying the word month in the singular. But I often hear even quite advanced people that say, say, 12 months ago. And that is absolutely not possible in English. No native English speaker is ever going to say it that way, unless he's a dialect speaker. Right? It's a survival from the days of King Alfred, if he does that. It's the most bizarre. No. What you can do, because you can make it easier, and we do. We don't say the th, but we do keep the s, the plural side. So we don't say 12 months ago. We say 12 months ago. Months ago. Months. 12 months ago. And that's fine. Nobody worries about that at all. You can do it with the word clothes, too, particularly if it's um, not highlighted. For instance, I would usually try and say clothes with both the th and the z. But uh, if I'm saying a word that, that uh, is the word, you know, the word clothing, clothes, Full of clothes. But if I'm saying clothes brush, for instance, right, the, the brush is perhaps more interesting than the clothes part of it, or equal, I may lose that altogether. Clothes brush, clothes brush. Nobody would notice if I said clothes brush that, I, that I, they wouldn't believe for one moment that, that I was trying to use any word clothes brush, right? Because they know that the word doesn't exist. They wouldn't even notice, I'm sure, that I'd done that. Okay, so that's uh, all I think I've got to say about. Uh, uh, this sort of thing. There are plenty of examples that are going on. You don't have to put yourself up for them, but uh, don't worry as long as you don't make the wrong ones. By the way, one of the commonest uh, uh, kinds of elision that you hear every day on the radio is when they're quoting from the newspapers, say, and this is the time of today suggests that, and when you get it, you're expecting, of course, suggests, aren't you? Right? Well, if there's no break in the rhythm there, and it goes straight on smoothly, you never hear that. 95% of the time, you hear suggest that, suggest that, and you only hear the T. Uh, and this is interesting, because it's relatively new. Uh, 50 years ago, I think most people would have kicked out the T as well. But the influence of middle class people put the T back in. So suggest that is normal now. But suggests that you can't do it smoothly in one, one little stream of sound, one fluent piece of phrasing. Right. Okay, thank you very much.